charge alongside we talked about Molly Briner. So she has some experience in front of her to help her really solidify defensively. Big shoes to fill for her tonight. Nidus has came in with in 13 games with a goals against average of 0.48 and five shutouts. So obviously Purifoy will be tested tonight against this 10th ranked TCU team and we are underway on a perfect night for soccer here in Stillwater. Neither one of these teams, Anna, has lost since September 4th. Of course, the Cowgirls, it was their only loss at Miami. The two losses for TCU at USC and against number two Duke. Right, and this is where when we talked about TCU, they've had some success against those top 25 teams. They've had a tie against Harvard, a tie against Texas earlier in the season. They beat Santa Clara. So they've really established themselves in the national conversation, whereas we talked about Oklahoma State needing to build up their resume, and we know that they have the capability to do so. And this is one of those prime opportunities for them, and really for both teams as far as the Big 12 standings go, to solidify themselves in that top spot, because right now it's anyone's game in the Big 12. TC with possession here in the early going, and Eric Bell in his 11th season. You mentioned it a while ago, six straight NCAA tournament appearances for the Horn Frogs, so quite a program he has built in Fort Worth, Texas. TCU with an early possession here. Program the Cowgirls have struggled with the last half decade. Frogs won both meetings last season. Cowgirls momentarily took it away near midfield, but the Horn Frogs get it right back. And in talking to Coach Carmichael earlier this week, he mentioned how crucial it's going to be for Oklahoma State to really take care of the ball when they do win it because they knew coming into this game TCU we talked about Eric Bell his coaching style they're very organized they like to keep possession of the ball they're very intentional with their passes and when Oklahoma State gets possession that first pass is so important for them to really be able to work the ball around and not give it away quickly Horn Frogs chase it down on the far side Kick into the box, headed up and over and out. It'll be a goal kick for OSU. Early charge as they got it down in front to Kennedy Klontz, the freshman from Frisco, Texas. It's important for Oklahoma State have to stay aware of those runners. Klontz made a great run, started off on the back post and then ran forward in front of the defenders, able to get ahead on it, but not square it up on frame. But TCU looking very dangerous early, a great delivery and a good offensive start for them. Simon able to get it across midfield. Back in possession is TCU. Coppinger kicks it far side. And the bright. She's got an angle. Somehow that ball stays in. Now out. And that'll set up a corner kick for TCU. Molly Briner did well there, moved her feet, didn't dive in. Messiah Bright, very capable with her speed as well to beat defenders, as you can see there. But Molly Bright did well to deny the service, but TCU with a corner kick opportunity upcoming. And Purifoy charges up and makes the play for Oklahoma State. This series is pretty dead even. We mentioned the success TCU has had against Oklahoma State since 2017, but all in all, six, six, and three between these two programs. 
Right, and if you're Oklahoma State, you obviously want to get back in that win column and the way that TCU has really established themselves. We talked a bit in the pregame show how they've gone to the last six NCAA tournaments, which is a testament to their program as they advance into the final third here. Into the 18-yard box, cross, headed out. And cleared out on the far side, but a good pass up to Cameron Lancaster, the sophomore from Mansfield, Texas, who has three goals on the season and just nobody home for TCU on her pass across the middle. And it'll set up a goal kick for Purifoy. And there we see it. The dead even between the Frogs and the Cowgirls. But lately dominated by TCU. Right, Oklahoma State definitely. Big game tonight, obviously for their program as well, and just the Big 12 to put themselves back and have confidence when playing these types of teams. And they know they can play at this level. They've done it before. The TCU on the front foot. Klontz stays in the box. Headed Purifoy there to make the save. So a couple of early shots around Purifoy as they test out the Oklahoma State goalkeeper. Lancaster did well there, get around the defender, keep the ball in, just a great chip up, allowing Gracie Bryan to rise up and try to put that one back on frame. Just doesn't generate enough power. Lead pass, Purefoy comes out and sends it soaring back across midfield. Pineda has it taken away. Yoakum gets it back, gets it to Haynes, on who's unable to keep it in because it was touched by a TCU player. Pass stolen by TCU and Coppinger. Riley, the transfer from Oklahoma. Frogs have possessed the ball most of this early going. Here with a little more than eight minutes gone by in the first half. And that's as expected. You've seen throughout the season, this is definitely a strength from TCU and how Eric Bell likes to coach his girls. And they've proven thus far that that's how they're going to play. And Oklahoma State, so important for them. We've talked about the importance of maintaining possession, but they've had their moments where they've read the game well, intercepted passes, but it's just that final pass, have to work to string together a few passes in order to build a true attack against this TCU defense. Knocked down and gotten back to Pineda. No whistle there, some contact near midfield. <laughs> Trying to find Bright, Allie Jackson lost her balance. An opportunity here and wide as the Horn Frogs a couple of feet away from getting on the board. 
It's a great piece of skill from Messiah Bright. Gracie Bryan making the run in behind, but initially Ali Jackson a missed clearance and Bright with the awareness of the overlapping run from Bryan and Bryan just not able to put that one on target. Another great angle here of the back heel. Purifoy was in a good position. Gracie Bryan's shot goes wide near post. So Bright sends it back. Was that good offense or less than stellar defense on that last exchange? I mean, Allie Jackson's a really solid defender for Oklahoma State, so by her own standards, obviously wanted to clear that away first time, but that just shows you the impact that TCU can have quickly when they are able to regain possession and a player like Messiah Bright with that much space and time, the awareness, the back heel, those are the moments you have to be careful. Oklahoma State can't give those away. And they're gonna call that one on Kiana Simon. And she knocks Brian down, the senior from Frisco, Texas with four goals on the season. Here's another look at the contact from Simon. Referee in a good position. Just goes through her. He might have gotten a bit of the ball, but got more of the player. And TCU with a good chance here. Knocked around. Purifoy goes up and puts both paws on it. Boy, but TCU has had a couple of early threats here in the first half. They have, they've definitely been on the front foot since that first whistle blew, but that's a great play from Purifoy just to build her confidence. Starting against a big team, as we mentioned, has been behind Jordanitis throughout this season, but her time to step in for Oklahoma State, and so far she's looked solid. Frogs back across midfield. Hallie Jackson and company send it back to Purifoy. But out on the far side, throw in TCU. There's Eric Bell, 11th season. And has really built a solid program down in the Metroplex. Little collision. Dow helped up. Here's another look at the replay. I think both players going for the ball there, but just here's another angle. Yeah, tough challenge. Referee right there to see it calling the foul on Olivia Hassler. Free kick from just shy of midfield. It'll be a throw in as that one last touched by Ben Boydell. TC is just very patient when in possession of the ball. And what's important for Oklahoma State when they are in possession for extended periods of time, just to stay switched on. Make sure you make, mark your runners, don't dive in as TCU here with a great turn. Lancaster finds Bright, gets it back. Gotta get up, gotta get up. Sends it into the box.
Back to Lancaster. Lancaster tries to get around the corner, right at the edge of the box, back out. And an opportunity here from close range. And Purifoy knocks it away. And a foul on Allie Jackson inside the 18-yard box. Referee signaling for a penalty kick for TCU after that challenge on Allie Jackson. Initially, great save from Purifoy. We'll get another look here at that last sequence of events. Ball gets played through, call for a potential offside, but play continues. Purifoy makes a good save, and then Jackson on this play here is the penalty kick. Here's another angle. We'll see how much contact. That's what the referee's calling there. Her foot, it's just enough. Brings her down on another day. Might not be, but TCU with a chance. Lancaster into the net, and TCU is on the board first here tonight. Since this first whistle blew, TCU has been very dominant in the final third, created a lot of opportunities. Lancaster has been buzzing all over the field. Walks up very calm and executes perfectly on this PK. Generates enough power up into the corner. Nothing Purifoy can really do there. And credit TCU since the starting whistle have come out in dominant form. Her fourth of the season, one to nothing with 29 minutes and 46 seconds left in the opening half. And TCU has put together double digit shot nights in each and every one of their games this season. These next five minutes, so important for both teams. Oklahoma State needing to respond quickly with energy as we get a look at the head coach of Oklahoma State and Colin Carmichael. Longtime tenured coach at Oklahoma State, 18th season. Big 12, he knows how to get to the NCAA tournament. They missed the NCAA tournament last season, so that's definitely something that they want to put themselves back in a position to do this season. And he mentioned in our call earlier this week that he likes where they are. They've put themselves in a good position, but they have to finish it. They have to see the season through and really capitalize on those moments and describe this this weekend as some sort of a kind of a tipping point in their season. Starting with the game tonight. Free kick for Peyton Cruz. Grad senior from Orange Park, Florida. Riley keeps it in play, fires it into the box, and right there in front of Briner, Purifoy comes up and lays hands on it. You just playing a little pitch and catch in the backfield. You know, it's hard to, you know, Texas Tech scored first in the last game we did. And of course, Cowgirls got to get some possession going to create some opportunities to score. Yeah, there have been moments in these last few games where it's been tough for Oklahoma State to 
keep possession for extended periods of time. We know that they have the talent to do it. You have players out there like Grace Yoakum, Olivia Dow, Pineda, very good in possession, but every individual player collectively has to show up and play a great game. It sounds simple, but Oklahoma State's had some inconsistencies as possession goes and TCU showcasing how that's a key component of their game. Lancaster, middle of the field. Yoakum. Back to Lancaster. And the Horn Frogs will throw it in on the near side. TCU just continuing to apply pressure in those moments, even when Oklahoma State tries to clear the ball. And that was a point of emphasis this week in practice for Oklahoma State was that exit pass, try to connect and find feet. Lancaster, good effort on the cross, but it's out and a goal kick for the Cowgirls. We'll get another look here on the replay. Lancaster plays another very good ball in. TCU had runners in the box. Doesn't get a clean header on it. But Klotz continuing to find her herself in areas to score. Twenty five minutes left here in this first half and already seven shots for TCU. Hassler. Coppinger. Sends it, leads her teammate perfectly and kicked out by Yoakum. Yoakum did well defensively there, but that's something if you're Oklahoma State, you want to see her more in those offensive scenarios, showcasing her skills. She's such a true goal scorer and Oklahoma State having to play very defensive minded right now with the attacking prowess that TCU has shown so far in this first half. Corner kick. Lancaster to do the honors. TCU keeps it in the box, at least for now. And finally cleared out near midfield. It was a great initial step from Alex Morris to win that ball. Important there for Oklahoma State. Find their composure, keep possession. Misconnection there. Trying to find Yoakum. Almost halfway through this first half. Riley. Lancaster directing traffic. TCU's movement has been so good in this first half. You're seeing players check in, pull out, run out of that space and recycle those runs, which is allowing them to keep possession for these long periods of time, just creating open players. Morris will throw it in for the Cowgirls on the far side. Morris 
And a foul on TCU. Foul called on Klontz. We'll get a look at the replay here. Just a strong challenge. Referee calls the foul. Allie Jackson sends it in. And Lauren Kellett, the junior, comes up. First time she's had her hands on the ball in quite a while. I'm sure in some way she prefers being quiet. Credit TCU's defense hasn't allowed much in this first half. Kellett along with Bright and Gracie Bryan, preseason all Big 12. Give and go and get it to Bright. And Bright got took one on the noggin. She bounces back up. Lancaster into the box, across the middle, and cleared back out and out near midfield, it'll be a throw in for TCU. Substitution first of the night for the Horn Frogs is seven Castain, a freshman from Draper, Utah, checks in. Takes the place of Klontz in the lineup for the Horn Frogs. When I hear Castain, I think of Brandy Chastain, <laughs> who everybody in soccer circles knows. TCU moving it in. And the throw in will be TCU's. The effort from Oklahoma State is not lacking defensively. They're throwing themselves in front of plays, doing anything they can to deny shot opportunities on frame. Nine shots on the night for TCU. Lancaster chases it down. What a move. And kicked out by Haynes, setting up a corner kick for the Horn Frogs. Lancaster showcasing some creativity there on the goal line, earns her team a corner kick in the process. Michelle Slater, a senior from Plano, subs in for Eric Bell. Hassler. TCU just looks calm, cool, and collected here in the first half. 
They've looked largely unfazed by pressure from Oklahoma State. They've done an excellent job when pressure is applied. They've taken that first touch away, released players. The movement off the ball always leaves someone open. And Oklahoma State hasn't really found a way yet in this first half to combat the possession that they have had. Castain keeps it in. Lead pass, and Oklahoma State's going to get to it first. Briner kicks it out, but the Horn Frogs will throw it in on the near side. Under 16 minutes remaining here in the first half. TCU leading one to nothing. Lancaster with a penalty kick goal. With a little less than 30 minutes left in the first half. Another push for the Horn Frogs. Allie Jackson clears it, but TCU still possesses. Kind of feels like a Oklahoma State's a bend but don't break. They're kind of on their heels a little bit defensively. Definitely, they've done mostly defending here in this first half, and we'll have to find a way as the game continues to develop to hold on to the ball, get numbers forward, and apply support to those players when they do have possession in the final third. Riley. Castain kicks it into the box, but Purifoy dives on it. Foul called near midfield. But Purefoy is definitely getting your money's worth tonight in her start. She's done well so far. I mean, she's only given up the penalty kick. Nothing you can do about that. She had a great save before that happened in that sequence of events leading up to the foul that caused the penalty kick. So Coach Colin Carmichael has to be pleased with her performance so far. And Allie Jackson. Let it go, let it go. Back to Kellett. Coppinger over to Riley. As we mentioned earlier, getting into the thick of Big 12 play now. And head coach Eric Bell for TCU worked really hard to prepare the Horn Frogs accordingly. They ranked 24th nationally and first in the Big 12 in toughest schedule. Through 14 games, TCU's played five ranked opponents and they've had a lot of success in those games. Currently two, one and two against those ranked teams, putting themselves in a good position, obviously sitting in the top 10. Blythe Beldner checks in for the Cowgirls. Lancaster. Go. 
back out across midfield. McClary and Chloe Wright also check in for Colin Carmichael's club. You get a look at Colin Carmichael there trying to keep his cowgirls composed. You saw him motioning there, keep the ball. Don't just kick it over the top. Just try to find those feet whenever you do regain possession of the ball because it's so hard against this TCU team to do so as they continue knocking the ball around in the final third. Send into the box. Cowgirls clear it. Frogs will chase it down back onto their own side of the field. And part of that too for Oklahoma State, the way this game has gone, they've been defending so hard in this first half, exerting a lot of energy. So when they do have the ball, important to make that extra run to be open for your teammate. Those are just some of the pieces needing to come together for Oklahoma State as they commit a foul here in TCU with another set piece opportunity as Megan Riley stands over this one. Simon made contact with Gracie Bryan, called for the foul. Riley bends it in there. And a goal kick as that one sails over everybody. Oklahoma State with a sigh of relief as that one goes untouched for a goal kick. We'll get another look here. Great ball in. Just itching for anyone to get a touch on it. Just needs to be redirected. But it sails wide. Erica McIntyre, the senior from Fort Worth, checks in for Oklahoma State, transfer from Missouri. Under nine and a half to go here in the opening half. TCU on top, 1-0. Give and go. Sent into the box, Purifoy in the right spot. It's a great ball from Gracie Bryan, just a bit too much. Purifoy, good anticipation to come off of her line quickly and collect that. Jackson boots it out. It'll be a throw in for the Horn Frogs as they make a couple more substitutions. Checking in for TCU. Skyler Heinrich. And Lauren Mamali. We've seen a lot of this tonight where TCU gets it down in in scoring position and OSU just kind of clears it. This is looking better from Oklahoma State though. Finding Olivia Dow, she's able to collect the ball, play the ball back, put a few passes together. But this is where Oklahoma State has to provide her support. She's finding herself isolated. Feldner. Good. 
you know, as a player. And is it, what point does frustration set in when you're an offensive player like Adal or a Yoakum and you've been playing defense all night? Oh, I'd imagine they're both pretty frustrated, but it's unfortunately part of their game have to play their part defensively just to try to regain possession. One player cannot take on this whole TCU team. So Oklahoma State's going to collectively have to regain themselves at halftime, whether that be making a couple of tactical tweaks or just being more intentional when they do get the ball, just linking together, finding their confidence again and remembering and reminding themselves that they have the capability to play with these high caliber teams. And they've proven that especially some of these veterans on Oklahoma State. They've been to Sweet 16s. They know what it takes. They'll have to draw from those experiences and come out and really react, try to make a difference and find the equalizer. Beldner kicks it out. It'll be a throw in for TCU. And Colin Carmichael's program has been in this position before. It's just a one goal game. so. And we he, know how fast that can change. You're exactly right. And he alluded to that early on this week. And every Big 12 coach will tell you this. If you look at the results across the Big 12, they're not 4-0 blowouts. They're 1-0, 1-1, a lot of ties. I mean, it's, it's very close in the Big 12. Good competition all around. So every single game, you have to expect a fight. So Oklahoma State still very much in this game, only having allowed one goal off of the penalty kick converted by Lancaster but TCU looking comfortable, haven't really been threatened offensively. We've talked about how good they are offensively, but defensively, they've already recorded seven shutouts this season, three of which have already come in conference play, and you can see why. Foul go against TCU. I think they called it on Riley. We'll get another look here at the contact on the replay. Might have been a bit of a theatrics there, but enough touch and extension of the arm for the referee. Allie Jackson. Beldner taken away by Riley. Jackson takes it away. Dowell tries to lead McClary and it's kicked down. It'll be a throw in on the near side for the Cowgirls. Much better from Oklahoma State. You could feel the reaction at Neil Patterson Stadium. You start to see a glimpse of the Cowgirls that they know. Jackson with a great step. Dow composed, trying to find that run from McClary. Just not able to execute, but better from the Cowgirls as they find themselves in the defensive third for TCU. Allie Jackson, shot, but Kellett right there where she had to be to make the play. First shot of the night for Oklahoma State. Almost found the equalizer. Jackson did so well, played a great ball across. Grace Yoakum on the first time hit. Good goalkeeping from Kellett as she brings that one in. That would have completely changed the dynamic heading into halftime. Slater. Emily, then back to Slater. Riley. Kicked out. Throw in TCU. Here's a look at that last sequence. Great ball in from Allie Jackson. TCU defensively in a good position, but Yoakum just steps in front of Gracie Bryan at the last second with the one-time shot. 
Obviously, if you're Oklahoma State, if that goes in, you're elated. But either way, just continuing to build some confidence offensively. It's Grace Yoakum, seven goals on the season. Hasn't had as much success in conference play. Struggled with a bit of a knock here or there as she tries to get back to full strength and definitely a key component for Oklahoma State's offense that they're hoping will help this evening. 40 goals in her cowgirl career. Of course, Dow with 30. Great one-two punch for Oklahoma State. Here comes TCU. Back out to Riley. Under half a minute to go here in the half. The Cowgirls would be content to head to the locker room down one nothing. So that'll do it for the first 45 minutes of action. And TCU has played very well. Cameron Lancaster with the penalty kick goal for TCU. They lead it at the break one to nothing. You're watching Big 12 now on ESPN Plus. At OG&E, we energize our future every day. That means enhancing and improving our grid to shorten outages, increasing reliability, and maintaining rates that are 30% below. Carmichael hoping to rally the troops here at home, uh, undefeated thus far here at Neil Patterson Stadium here in 2022. As we get started here in this second half, that's another important factor for Oklahoma State. A few home games upcoming, so they'll have that advantage a good crowd came out to neil patterson stadium tonight and that extra energy might be the difference for them to find themselves back in this game coppinger finds her teammate back across midfield A little bit too far ahead there. And it is out. That'll set up a goal kick for Purifoy. Thought she played well in the first half. She did, and it's a, I mean, it's a big role, very important, and for her to come in and command that brave goalkeeping only let in that penalty kick. Nothing she could do about that. She didn't have any errant mistakes, anticipated the ball well. If you're calling Carmichael, hope that she keeps that consistency here in this second half, allowing Oklahoma State's offense to do more of the work here. Yeah, she had to make some snap decisions, and the only snap decision on a PK, that it has to be quick, and, and unfortunately you're up against it in that situation. But other than that, made some great plays and some great decision making on the pitch. Simon will actually kick it off of one of the horn frogs. And it was Lancaster last touched it. So throw in far side cowgirls. Try again.
back across midfield and out. Back to Kellett. Notable change for Oklahoma State at halftime. Yoakum has come off. McIntyre will replace her in the midfield. Simon lofts it. Chloe right out there for the Cowgirls to start half number two. Beldner to throw it in. Coppinger. Bright and Briner getting a little tangled up here on the near side. Here's another look at the contact. Good physical battle between the two. Nothing super malicious there. But Oklahoma State with a free kick here and Molly Briner. And they're going to call the foul there on Oklahoma State. Nia Johnson. Referee sees just enough push in the back there. Simon. Good lead pass on the far side. Slide in the box. TCU takes it away. Lancaster shot by Brian to the corner post and Purifoy there to make the play. It was a great overlapping run from Brian. Here's another look at the shot. She tries to go near post, but Purifoy, perfect positioning, looks confident, brings that one in for Oklahoma State and did well there as Oklahoma State was caught a bit out of position as they had pushed forward. And that happens sometimes when you make a push offensively. Too many gals forward. TCU dribbled it all the way up the field and got in position for another shot. But if you're Oklahoma State, you want to see that. You want to see those risks going forward. They need to find some life offensively. And if they leave themselves a bit exposed, they have the confidence in Allie Jackson and Purifoy to do what they just did. Whistle. Referee had played advantage to see if that play developed. I believe he's initially calling that foul on Nia Johnson. We'll get another look at the replay. 
late tackle, referee, rightfully so, let the play develop to see if anything came of it, came back to call that initial foul. Say right touched it last. I've noticed just in these first few minutes, the Oklahoma State bench has brought more energy trying to lift their team here in the second half. And already there have been spells where Oklahoma State has looked better. Foul there on the Cowgirls on Haynes. First of four straight here at home for Oklahoma State and a chance to build momentum. And we've got Cowgirls shaken up on the far side. Reckless challenge comes in. Grace Yoakum puts her body in a good position. She knows she's going to take a hit there. No contact. And Kennedy Klontz committing that foul. Referee goes to his pocketbook. Issues a yellow card. Sets up the free kick. See, that's... First yellow card of the game issued. And Chloe Wright, kind of a wheelhouse kick, and Kellett right there in position to make the save. We'll get another look here at the replay. The knockdown so important. Oklahoma State gets to it first. And Chloe Wright just not able to generate enough power but just in these first 10 minutes or so of this second half, Oklahoma State putting themselves in a position to create more chances. Bright. Chance here for the Frogs right outside the 18 yard box. Riley to Bright and Purifoy down on the ground to grab it. Purifoy once again, great play, looking confident in goal for the Cowgirls. She helps keep the score line the way it is as Oklahoma State trying to find their way back up the field, but TCU regains possession. Coppinger and pass a little bit out of the stretched legs of Lancaster and out throw in Oklahoma State. Dal and Coppinger battling. It's been a good competitive battle between these two teams, but you can tell here in the second half, things are starting to get more physical. That off of Ben Boydell, throw in TCU. Ben Boydell. Into the box. Yeah. 
Riley on the backside for TCU. But Oklahoma State pressing a little bit more, showing some sense of urgency. They are, they're getting more players involved. I like the play from Gracie Ben Boyle on that left side. She was quiet in the first half. She's been an effective freshman for Oklahoma State. They'll have to find a way to get her more touches, get Grace Yoakum involved, Dowell. Oklahoma State definitely with the caliber of players to make a difference and have already looked more promising here in this second half. Right over to Coppinger. Boy, TCU's been crisp and when they've changed direction and sides of the field. Bright. Throw in horn frogs on the near side. Riley. Over to Lancaster for Bright. She sends it back across, headed up and out. Goal kick, Oklahoma State. Another good ball in from Lancaster as TCU's found some success springing the ball wide. She's put in a few really good deliveries throughout this game, but just not able to connect on that header, not forcing Purefoy to make a save there. Cruz back across. Brian. Looking for Lancaster, but a little bit too far in front. Looks like both teams will make substitutions here. Morris, Pineda, McClary on for the Cowgirls, Castain for TCU. Coach Colin Carmichael looking to find a spark offensively. Another opportunity in front for the Horn Frogs. Morris fortunate that doesn't go into the back of her own net. Here's another look at the replay. Really dangerous ball in from Castain. Morris did well there to track defensively, get her ball get her body in between the player and that incoming ball, but sends that one away, forces a corner kick. OSU finally able to clear it, but TCU with the possession. Back out to midfield. Oh 
That's out. Throw in TCU. 27 and a half left here in the second. And Lancaster sandwiched by Briner and Johnson. And that'll set up a dangerous free kick for the visitors from Fort Worth. Referee checking to make sure Lancaster doesn't need some medical attention. Here's another look. Just hit from both sides. Johnson and Briner go in on the challenge. Lancaster slow to get up after that one, but referee making the correct call there as Oklahoma State tries to get organized defensively. Purifoy organizes her four-man wall. Get a quick look at the fouls so far this evening. Oklahoma State with eight, TCU five. Cruz over to Lancaster, right to Purifoy. Great awareness from Oklahoma State. Off of the short free kick, they were ready in Purifoy. Confident once again brings that one in and clears it away. Morris Coppinger back to her goalkeeper. Back across the field are the Frogs. Lancaster to Brian. An outstanding vision from Brian. Hassler. Just wide. Dangerous lob in into the box and near the goal. It's a really good ball in. Off of the replay, have back post runners. Gracie Bryan was there, but Alex Morris in a good position, tracking her runner appropriately. Sends that one out for a corner kick. Castain sets it down. Ricochets off a couple of players. And now Morris. Morris trying to find that far run from Ben Boydell. Oklahoma State trying to make a case for a handball there. But nonetheless, TCU continues to play on. They've looked solid. Solid and poised is what I would say, Anna. Lancaster fires up and over. I think that's right. Something about TCU that makes them so fun to watch is they do the simple things right. Their first touch is excellent. They release the ball quickly. Their passes are crisp. And really at all positions across the field, that is the standard. And it has showcased very well this evening. 
Slater and Memely back on for the Horn Frogs. Jackson kicks that one out as Bright was trying to get in position. Nia Johnson clears it back to midfield. Emily back to Coppinger. Castain off of Morris and out, setting up another corner kick for the Horn Frogs. More than halfway through the second half, and Still one nothing TCU. Slater able to keep it in the box. McClary. Trying to lead Pineda, but TCU steals it. Castain fires Purifoy there for the two handed save. Purifoy trying to allow Oklahoma State some time to recover there as they tried to defend on that last sequence. But here's another look at that last shot from Castain. Finds herself in a bit of space centrally, but just doesn't put that one away from Purifoy. Foul on Briner. Cowgirls scoring punch on the bench currently in Yoakum and Dow. Back to Kellett. TC will reset. off of Pineda and out. And here come Haynes, Dowell, and Yoakum. And back on the field for TCU is Skylar Heinrich. Simon to McClary. 
Now Morris. Coppinger steps in front of Dowell and Horn Frogs get it back to their goalkeeper. Handball. Eighteen minutes left on the clock here in the second half. Neil Patterson Stadium in Stillwater. Big 12 showdown between 10th ranked TCU and Oklahoma State. Sent into the box. Unable to clear it in the back of the net. Found by Messiah Bright. And the Horned Frogs lead it 2 nothing. Messiah Bright strikes with her ninth goal of the season for TCU. Here's another look. Great free kick set play into the box. That next ball, the knockdown, so important. And Oklahoma State not able to get there. But Messiah Bright is, fires that one past Purifoy. And TCU extends their lead 2-0. And now a huge hill to climb for Oklahoma State as Bright heads to the bench and checking in for TCU is Tyler Isgrig. And Isgrig, seeing her for the first time tonight, comes in second on the Horn Frogs roster in scoring with five goals, three assists to go along with that. Coming up for TCU. That'll be a satisfying moment for Megan Riley, the Oklahoma transfer that sent that one in for Bright to set up the goal. It's a great set piece. And what makes Messiah Bright such a good player is she knows how to anticipate where the ball might be. And that's what makes a great attacking player. She anticipates the knockdown. It bounces off of Kiana Simon, Oklahoma State, not able to clear it quick enough. And Messiah Bright pounces on it with an excellent finish. Briner. Now Morris. Creates some space. Tried to lead Yoakum. Ben Boydell and Chloe Wright back in for Oklahoma State. And check it in for TCU. Brenna Brossom. Fifteen fifteen to go here in the second half. Two nothing. Horn Frogs. Throw in TCU. Purifoy way out of her box to defend and anticipate that one. 
She allows time for Oklahoma State defenders to get back in position. Cowgirls to throw it in. Dow has it taken away by Slater. Briner to Yoakum to Ben Boydell. Dow with it now. And a chance here for Oklahoma State. It's a very similar position to how TCU just scored their second goal. Same thing applies. Have to be aware of the knockdown. Anticipate where that ball might bounce if it's not hit directly on frame from Allie Jackson's delivery. Jackson bends it in there. It'll be a throw in on the far side for the Cowgirls. Another Oklahoma State throw in. Morris, nice move, sends it towards Kellett, who reaches up and pulls it down. Great initial move from Alex Morris just to create a bit of space for herself to release that shot on frame. It just doesn't generate enough power to beat Lauren Kellett from distance. the push on Ben Boydell. We'll get a look at the last opportunity from Alex Morris. Drops the shoulder, good piece of skill. We'll get another look here at this angle. Just doesn't put enough power behind it. Easy save for Kellett. Shots on goal. Oklahoma State with three, TCU with 15 total shots. Allie Jackson. And Lauren Kellett, easy play for her. She made that look easy. Great mm -hmm. goalkeeping. Kicked out near midfield, it'd be a throw in for the Cowgirls. 11 minutes, under 11 minutes left here in the second half. And really crunch time for the Cowgirls. Down two goals. We talked about TCU with 76% of the possession time in the first half. They've had it more here in the second. Incidental contact there, but it'll be a throw in for Alex Morris. Coppinger kicks it out. Hey, 
headed out by Castain. Oklahoma State looking for an opening. Allie Jackson into the box. Briner to Yokum. Yokum tries to turn. Back to Morris. Headed out of the box. And back to Purifoy. Out on the far side, Cowgirls will toss it in. 8.40 to go. Boy, nice quick reflexes by the referee. <laughs> I don't know what you call that, a pirouette, maybe? <laughs> Beldner back on, along with Lancaster. Some great reaction and awareness by the referee. What if he practiced that move down at the tumbleweed? Coppinger, Slater. And a lot of the times, Anna, when TCU's had possession, Cowgirls not in the vicinity. That's a testament to the movement off the ball from TCU and just their proactive approach they take to this game. They're thinking one step ahead, that next pass. Hubbard into the box. Makes a couple of moves, and then Allie Jackson called for the foul. And that's going to set up another close-range opportunity for the Horn Frogs. Allie Jackson commits her second of the evening that results in a penalty kick. Here's another look. Hubbard, quick feet in the box. Jackson knows better. Dangles her foot there. Hubbard did really, really well. And into the net, easy goal for TCU, and they lead it 3-0. Tyler Iskrig with her sixth goal of the season, stepped up with confidence. We'll get another look. Purifoy chooses the wrong way, and TCU dominant with their third goal of the night. Hubbard with an initial great play, good feet in the box, and Allie Jackson, uncharacteristic from a player of her stature. And Oklahoma State finds themselves down 3-0, just under seven minutes left. So TCU showing tonight why they're in the top 10 nationally. And if they hold on, they'll improve to 5 0 and 1 against the Cowgirls since 2017. Iowa State will be in here on Sunday at 1 o'clock.
and TCU putting themselves in position as we have another couple of substitutions coming in. Memoli along with number eight for the Frogs, Ali Pena. Chance for a third consecutive Big 12 regular season title. called for the foul there. Pineda to Jackson, back to Pineda. Into the box to Jackson, deflected out, corner kick Cowgirls. But time winding down, under four and a half to go here in the second. Better combination play from Jackson and Pineda. We'll see if Oklahoma State can capitalize on this late corner kick opportunity. Sales past everybody. And out. Oklahoma State with numbers in the box. A great service, but no one on the end of it. Pineda curling in back post, couldn't ask for better. Oklahoma State not able to get on the end of it. It was their first corner kick of the night compared to TCU's six. Beldner. Cowgirls are gonna have to make some things happen very quickly. Nia Johnson. Belder couldn't get to it, but it was off of TCU. Belder and Hennessy over there kind of having a couple of words. Lancaster called for the foul as Haynes takes a tumble. 2.15 remaining. kick for Oklahoma State. Jackson trying to find a target in Grace Yoakum there. Know how threatening she can be on aerial challenges. And Oklahoma State with their second corner of the night. Pineda. Looks like it may have hit off the side of her foot. Kind of a cowgirl's night in a microcosm. Bell's got to be proud of his team's performance here tonight. Yeah. 
Under a minute to go. Yellow card issued to Cameron Lancaster. Accumulation of fouls. Comes in strong in behind. And Oklahoma State with a final chance here. Simon. And Kellett. Keeps the shutout alive for TCU with 10 seconds left on the clock. So that'll do it. TCU improves to 9, 2, and 4, 4, 0, oh, and 2 of the Big 12. Cowgirls fall to 9, 2, and 3, 2, 1, and 2 in conference play, Anna. Absolute dominant performance from TCU. Head coach Eric Bell has to be pleased with the performance, the possession, the composure, three quality goals this evening. 